Hello everybody, this is Tim here again, here with another movie review. Uh, this time, not doing the next Snyder Cut chapter commentary just yet, but I will be getting to it soon. So, this is a review for the film that I just watched for the first time called Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas with Johnny Depp and Benicio Del Toro. Now, this is a movie that had came out, like I believe, like 1997, 98-ish, I think, I can't remember exactly. But this is a film that's been around for a while now, and... Um, it's a movie that I had never actually seen, but I'd heard about it a lot of times, so I finally thought, hey, what the hell, let's give it a watch. Now, it's based off a book, I believe, written by the writer uh, Hunter S. Thompson. If I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure that's who the writer is. Now, as far as, like, the film goes, it's directed by Terry Gilliam, Gilliam and if you don't know who Terry Gilliam is, he's pretty much like, um, how do I put this, uh, David Lynch is, like, more stable brother. <laughs> but uh, as far as the, this movie goes, it's pretty much about uh, Giant Depp. Benicio Del Toro playing two drug addicts who will do pretty much any drug known to man who are going off into Vegas and just cruising through the countryside doing drugs. There is no plot to this movie at all. And this film is pretty much like a cult classic. It, it, got, it gets like really good audience ratings for the most part. Or a lot of good audience ratings. Like the people who like this movie do really like it. It has a good IMDb score of like a 7.5 I think. Um. Critics really didn't like this film. Like on Wikipedia, it says like it got mixed reviews. No, it got mostly negative reviews. <laughs> like the the percentage score for how many people liked it on Rotten Tomatoes is like 40 some percent for critics. Critics did not really like this flick. Uh, I guess I could kind of see why. Like if you're a critic and you want like an actual plot and more character growth and all that kind of stuff, and that you ain't getting this in this film. Like critics don't seem to really like like off the track, off the beaten road films. Mostly, a lot of times they don't really seem to like them, um, or they didn't really seem to like them. Maybe they're more open to them now since there's been so many different types of experimental filmmaking and stuff like that. So maybe they're more open to it now, but they really don't seem to like films that kind of go off the beaten track and stuff like that. But there's really no plot to this film at all. Like if you're someone who really want like watching this for the first time, I was waiting for like, is there going to be a story that kicks in, like a plot to this? There isn't. Like Terry Gilliam, like I believe he said that his. Like the, the meaning of the film was like this dude played by Johnny Depp trying to a Raul Duke or I believe is his name trying to um, get the keep the like 60s vibe of the world going with all the drugs and free love stuff and all that but it really doesn't play that way in the movie I mean you kind of get the idea that he is like a hippie guy or whatever but it really doesn't play like the movie has any kind of message from his character I mean you really don't get an idea of what, what his character wants it's just like you just get an idea that he's a big drug addict who just wants to go crazy and do drugs constantly and he's just a little bit more stable minded and a little bit more moralistic than Benicio Del Toro's character who's kind of more crazy when he's on drugs you get like a, he's supposed to be like his lawyer which is even funnier that he's just going on a road trip with him and they're crazy from the first moment you see him and they're hired hell and like Johnny Depp's like swinging a fly swatter like swatting at bats supposedly that he's like hallucinating it's pretty funny um but yeah, they're just like crazy as hell through the whole movie, and it is really funny. Like, if you enjoy this film, it's going to be because, not the plot, but because of the Johnny Depp and Benicio Del Toro's performance, especially Johnny Depp's performance for the most part, because he pretty much carries the whole film. Um, Benicio Del Toro does a great job as well, but Johnny Depp is awesome in this. He gets the best stuff and the most focus. But yeah, he's hilarious, like from beginning, near, like 90% of the time, or at least close to 90% of the time, I was laughing at nearly everything Johnny Depp said. Like, there's a random scene where him and Benicio Del Toro are, like, busting up vehicles, and all at once he uh, he runs off in his car or whatever, and he, the, there's, like, an angry mob there, and he hollers out and said, you you guys killed Jesus, or something like that. It's like, it's, like, so out of left field, it made me laugh. And he just says, like, random crazy crap to the whole movie. Like, there's a point in the movie where, where uh, Benicio, or whatever, uh, has, uh, like, uh, gotten, um, Christina Ricci, and this was like her, I think her next like more adult film after the Ice Storm, I believe, is like, he's like picked her up and he says he got her from, met her on the plane or whatever, and uh, he's meeting Johnny Depp in like a hotel room. Like, Benicio Del Toro disappears for a little chunk of the movie and then he just kind of randomly like pops back in. It just kind of comes out of nowhere a little bit, but he does come back in um, with uh, Christina Ricci and he's there with her and Johnny Depp's like talking to him. You get like this hilarious over the top scene. Where the where Johnny Depp's like, uh, we could pimp her out to the police, like an uh, all cornhole and gang raper, and he's like, she's a fighter, she'll do it, she'll hold her own. <laughs> it's really hilarious and just so over the top and ridiculous. Like this whole film, it does have tonal problems. This movie, like you get scenes where um, some characters are like more normal, but most of the characters in this, like over 
50% of them are, are really broad, like cartoonish type characters to fit in with the, the tone of the movie and the madness of Johnny Depp and Benicio Del Toro as like the driving force of the movie, you know what I'm saying? It's like really cartoony for the most part. So it does have some tonal problems where it's got more stable-minded, kind of normal acting people and it, mostly it's got, most of the time, just like really cartoonish people. This film is pretty much just like one big acid trip. There's no plot to it. It's just like seeing the world from the Johnny Depp and Vimicio's character's eyes or whatever to the whole movie. It's just them going around. Uh, like a, It's pretty much like a road trip, acid trip comedy. Like I heard uh, Terry Gilliam was disappointed in the marketing for this movie as like marketing it, I believe, is like a buddy type comedy thing or something like that. But really, that's kind of what it is, really. But I get what he's saying. He did, he did, he did, uh, it's not really like a wacky comedy uh, in the sense that, uh, like the, I guess the trailers were kind of putting out like a more of a traditional wacky comedy. This is more of an artsy, wacky drug comedy. Uh, there's a lot of scenes in this movie that remind me of Natural Born Killers, like the film and style of that. And I heard Oliver Stone wanting to do a film version of this or try to get it off the ground. Uh, I think he might have been uh, <laughs> ripped a couple of scenes or moments from this film off, kind of style wise, for his uh, Natural Born Killers movie, to be honest. But, uh, yeah, the movie, uh, it's a great flick, I just go ahead and say it, I give it a 4 out of 4, if you can accept it for what it is, like if you're into this film for what it is, and I have to judge a movie for what it's, whether or not it's successful for what it's trying to be, not what I wish it was or wish it did, this is a film that purposely just wants to have like no plot, uh, whether regardless of what Terry Gilliam may have intended with the movie, the movie itself wants to be a movie with like no plot that's the way it plays and just wants to be like the misadventures and craziness of these two guys just like going around and it really feels like a real cartoon world like i do wish there would have been a little bit more of a story um at certain points it did start to drag a little because i was kind of getting wore out on the comedy a little bit but then giant Depp when the uh, orb Mitzio would just come back in uh, a little bit later and just use some more crazy stuff and more antics and i would just start getting into the movie more and i'd be sucked right back into the film the movie does run a little long. I was starting to feel like maybe this would work more as just like a shorter jokey type thing. But by the end of the flick, uh, I was really into it again. And so I was just like laughing my ass off at most of this film. Um, but yeah, all in all, this is a four-star film. And it pretty much just ends with Johnny Depp and uh, Bamisio getting on a plane and leaving Johnny Depp like taking off or whatever. Uh, leaving Las Vegas. And... <laughs> And that's pretty much the end of the movie. One other thing is Johnny Depp's character has like this more serious kind of like narration about the events in the film or about events in general that he's like talking about. And at most points it kind of works because he does say like zany stuff, but other times it does seem like he's trying to be more deep in thought about stuff. And it just comes off like, nah, nah you, you ain't meshing there with the, the ridiculousness of this movie. But uh, I heard one like uh, critic say, if you're just expecting like a Cheech and Chong type comedy thing or something like that, I'm just like a more edgy, slightly edgier Cheech and Chong or whatever you really enjoy. It. That's kind of the way the movie is in place for a lot of it. Um, it wasn't that totally by the end. Um, this is more of just like an edgier, wackier comedy, really, or wacky comedy, really, and slightly edgier, wacky comedy by the end of the movie. That is pretty much how it plays, and I guarantee you that most of like the cult fan base for this movie likes it because of how silly and over-the-top and crazy it is. A lot of funny comedies were, uh, I mean, a lot of funny moments were just like random actors just come out and just say, like, cameos from like more well known actors like Gary Busey who just shows up as a cop and he's like randomly grabbing Johnny Depp and he's like, he just says all at once out of the blue, give me a kiss. He just like comes out of nowhere and makes no sense, but it's just hilarious because it, it works in the context of the tone of this movie that's just pretty much like extremely wacky cartoon. Um, and for some people that may put them off, they may not like the whole like vibe or gel of this movie. They may want something more streamlined. Uh, I can see that, but other people, especially people who probably smoke a lot of reefer, nothing against that, if that's what you want to do, whatever. But uh, people uh, will probably be really into this movie, especially Stone. They'll probably be laughing their ass off. Yeah, all in all, this is a four out of four. It's a great time for if you know what you're getting into. And if you can gel with this movie, I think you'll have a great time with it. So uh, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you again.